ओमकदंदमताय सूर्यकोटिमुर्विघ्नु सरस्वतीभ्यं गुरुर्ब्रह्मा नम शांति ओम श्री परमात्मा ओम श्रीपरमात्मनेगवाचरागभ्रोधा ृथाश्रिताश्रिताभ्रावता मामुपाशिंग टू दर्सन मनमयाटली आत्म विचारेण शास्त्र विचारेण ज्ञान जीव ब्रह्म दट इज ज्ञान विच इज अल्टिमेट प्यूरीफयर दूताइड शुद्धिभय राघद्वेश Jnana, which is the cause of samsara, is the impurity which cannot go away by any other means other than jnana. Therefore, shastra pravara. So, therefore, antak karna should be around for this. For this one, only, therefore, for the for gaining jnana, one has to become the padra, the fit receptor. The recipient of jnana, with antakarna being shuddha, ashuddha, antakarna having no pleasure, one cannot, one cannot understand, one cannot assimilate this jnana. Therefore, to make the antakarna relatively pure, 
साधन चतुष्टय संपत्ति that is antakarna shuddhi then anadara shuddhi is at the that is the level of jnanam that is the jnanam which is the ashuddha thermal of which x thermal of which x jiva appreciate the oneness in ishvara so therefore the ultimate purifier is ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ नॉलेज इजली ईश्वर so therefore as a preliminary preliminary needs karma yoga that is antakam par karma yoga par antakam nishu that is a relative shift absolute shuddhi what is absolute shuddhi total shuddhi total shuddhi is not possible total shuddhi but all is there is possible for the level of yan yan nivritti is total shuddhi absolute shuddhi one becomes free from ajnanam one becomes mukta that is absolute shuddhi absolute shuddhi is brahm absolute shuddha is brahm nitya shuddha mukta swabhava nitya mukta shuddha swabhava brahm ishvara so that is that abdal of that absolute shuddhi cannot be achieved it is to be understood because is you it is atma Atma is ever shuddha. Therefore, it cannot be achieved because it is you. It is in the vishaya dvat is already accomplished. So, therefore, absolute shuddhi at the level of atma and relative shuddhi at the level of antakkar. Upad. So that is enough here. Relative and absolute. Shuddhi. Shuddhi, Shuddhi means pure, Shuddha, purity. There is no mala absence. There is uh, mala absence of mala. Relative Shuddhi is a process of growth, a process of maturity, wherein life of alertness, discipline, commitment, and prayer is God. That is Karma Yoga, right? That's it. Such a life is a life of purification. Tamayoga is meant for antakarna should therefore purification, but antakarna is cannot be made absolutely pure, not possible. It is subject to impurities, but it has to be relatively made pure. For that, the means is karma yoga. So by which the person, the person becomes a a patra, a subtle. Subtle for gaining jnana, which is ever that is jnana of oneself that is ever shuddha atma is ever shuddha. So therefore, relative shuddhi is is a process of purification. But absolute shuddhi, absolute shuddhi cannot be a process of purification because the impure can never become pure by any amount of purifying, and also the pure that which is pure cannot be made. Impure by any amount of 
impurities. So the fourth relative shuddhi and absolute shuddhi to be understood. Relative shuddhi is karma yoga, absolute shuddhi is jnana. So such a life is a life of purification and being a process, it takes a length of time. That is Raghad Kresha Navrati, that is the purification, relative shuddhi. It takes a certain length of time. The length of time could be one janma, could be many janmas. It all depends. It all depends on the person, what he carries from so many janmas. An absolute shuddhi cannot be a process of purification because the word absolute, it is already, it is totally pure. How can be subject to purification? Because an impure can never become pure by any amount of purifying, no matter what the process is. If impure is made pure, again it will become impure. If something is absolutely pure, it cannot be made impure. Atma is ever pure, it can be made impure. Atma is in the fourth jnana. The absolute should be at the level of jnana. Therefore, the self which is absolutely shuddha is already pure. But no need to purify. Antakarnam, antakarnam subject to impurity. It is upadhi. It is upadhi. Therefore, subject to impurity. Therefore, only karma yoga. Purity means freedom from ragat devotions. Atma doesn't have ragat devotions. Atma doesn't have Raghadesha, Atma doesn't have Karma, therefore no Punya Papa, no Pudarjanma. What does Raghadesha is? This Antakkaram. The Chidabhasa. Chidabhasa, that is Antakkaram. Chit, Chidabhasa. That alone as Raghadesha, therefore, consequence of Raghadesha in the form of Samsara. Karma, karma pala, punya papa. So, purity means freedom from market dosha, punya papa. Freedom from everything in fact. This purity is the nature of Atma because Atma is being nirguna. Free from gunas, free from all attributes. It is akarta, it is avokta, it is not subject to time, therefore not subject to change. It is not an assemblage, not put together, therefore. It cannot be a karta nor karayita, it can neither be a, a subject or an object. Both, that is the nature of Atma. And those who know this are also pure. Putaha. Those who know that, that, that the nature of Atma, those who know the nature of oneself, be pure. They are pure, putaha bhavanti, meaning that they have understood the fact that as Atma, they are eternally pure. Therefore, they are Madhbhava Magataha, as Krishna puts it, meaning they have come back to me, they come home, they have understood the fact. This coming back of, of Bhagavaha, so many jivas, Bhagavaha, Jnana Tapasaha, Putaha, Madhbhava Magataha, Madhbhava Magataha is they have come, they, they come back, they have come back to my. And my, they have come back to me. Advabham, they come. They have attained my nature, meaning so many jivas is to be understood in terms of the identity of Jiva Ishwara, Jiveshwara Ikyam. That is jnana. It is not that all these jivas are come to Ishwara and are sitting upon. As though Ishwara is one, and uh, this all these jivas are from small dots sitting on the Ishwara. Not as he has collected them all to him so that they have become an integral part of his heart or his being. This particular knowledge reveals the fact that Jiva is Ishwara Eva. Jiva cannot be different from Ishwara, never away from Ishwara. Therefore, they have come back to me means this only the Aikya, oneness, identity of Jiveshwara. Those who know this fact, they are called Yananishtaha. Because not only they have gained the knowledge, but they are also Nishta, Vitram Stitihi. They are established, well established in this Jnanam. That is Nishta, Vitram Stitihi. Nishta. Nishtayena Stitihi. Reaching Bhagavan is not dependent upon any tapas other than knowledge. Tapas is required for relative Shuddhi. Relative. 
ఇంత కనుషు అబ్జల్యూట్ తపస్ అబ్జల్యూట్ శుద్ధి దట్ ఈస్ ఓన్లీ జ్ఞానం సో దాని కాఫోర్ తపస జ్ఞాన తపస జ్ఞానం ఏ తపస్ మోక్ష కఫోర్ రీచింగ్ భగవాన్ అద్భావం ఆగతా దట్ ఈస్ రీచింగ్ భగవాన్ నోయింగ్ భగవాన్ ఈస్ రీచింగ్ భగవాన్ దఫోర్ ఇట్ ఈస్ నాట్ డిపెండెంట్ అపాన్ ఎనీ తపస్ అదర్ దన్ జ్ఞానం జస్ట్ టు సే ప్యూరిఫైడ్ బై దట్ ఈస్ సింప్లీ తపసా పూతా ఇట్స్ నాట్ ఇన్ అవర్ బట్ జ్ఞాన హాస్ టు బి యాడెడ్ బికాస్ దెర్ ఆర్ అదర్ ఫార్మ్స్ ఆఫ్ తపస్ జ్ఞాన తపస వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ తపసా పూతా బై తపస్ బికమ్ ప్యూర్ బై దట్ జ్ఞానం ఇస్ దర్ బికాస్ జ్ఞానేన జ్ఞాన తపస భగవాన్ క్యాన్ బి రీచ్ దట్ ఈస్ నో టీచింగ్ ఈస్ నోయింగ్ భగవాన్ క్యాన్ బి నో జ్ఞాన తపస్ యాస్ వన్ సెల్ ప్లస్ మై సెల్ ద పర్స్యూట్ ఆఫ్ నాలెడ్జ్ ఇస్ ఇ ప్రైమరీ తపస్ ద వర్డ్ తపస్ రెఫర్స్ టు ద వర్డ్ తప తప్ దాతు తప్ దాగే దట్ ఓన్లీ వి గెట్ తప తప్ మీన్స్ హీట్ తప్ దా తపతి హీట్ మీన్స్ సెల్ఫ్ మార్టిఫికేషన్ it is from a self discipline so therefore tapas is sakaranta shoka anatom sakalinta it refers to any discipline religious or spiritual for example a person who chants gayatri mantra for 6 hours is said to be doing religious tapas so the thing thing being right the gayatri mantra japa for 6 hours doing japa for 6 hours itself is a tapas a person who observes silence for a length of time is also doing tapas So, reading, of course, he or she is doing it for religious purposes as a mental prayer, for example. However, to keep quite purely out of consideration for this, it's entirely different. What is not the person? So, when a person is performing a spiritual discipline like contemplation or studying the Shatra, it's a tapas. Radhyaya is a tapas. Radhyaya. Radhyaya means study. that is uh, that is also here tapaswadhyaya parvachana abhyam na paramadi tagyam tapaiti tapo nitya paur shakti hi is in the interplay tapaswadhyaya parvachana echa so tapas the whole those the for those swadhyaya the study of the shastra is considered to be the greatest to the purpose the for those who are committed to listening to the shastra shravanam mananam and vidyasanam and to self enquiry vichara they are doing tapas the gita study of gita is tapas study of upanishads tapas or any prakarana grantha every class is a tapas although there are many forms of tapas to become established in this knowledge to become established in knowledge because only jnana tapas jnana the pursuit of knowledge is a tapas the word jnanam is prefixed to tapas the word is jnana tapas to show that jnana drishta doesn't depend upon any other tapas this is because moksha is not anything other than being established this knowledge this word moksha moksha meaning jnanam jnanam eva moksha hat there is no other moksha the so purpose of moksha you require knowledge and for knowledge you don't require anything other than vichara shastra vichara atma vichara shastra vichara is atma atma vichara shabana so therefore the pursuit of knowledge itself is deep means the pursuit of knowledge in the form of shabanam mananam anididhyasam that is a means and therefore that is it tapas greatest to tapas then what about all the other disciplines they are also meant for preparing the mind so that this knowledge can take place they are also important they have a place this is what is meant by purification of the mind antak tradition antak should be relatively made pure It not be made absolutely pure not possible it is subject to impurity subject to impurity therefore it is it has to be cut every day it has to be it has to be cleaned it, it has to be monitored it is like a copper vessel which when not washed copper vessel will gather stains when it is exposed to the atmosphere so natural so similarly antakarnam also therefore 
therefore only every day puja japa chanting etc antakarana shuddhi samast so therefore purification of mind therefore the other disciplines are they are meant for purifying the mind they are the secondary means whereas knowledge is a primary means because by which one becomes free one gains moksha therefore to say that these other disciplines are secondary is not to say that they have no place yes they have a place they have value they have importance the distinction to be understood is that these other disciplines are indirect means for moksha in that they prepare or purify the antakaranam while the pursuit of knowledge is a direct means for the knowledge of this moksha so therefore as indirect means all the other disciplines all the other tapas disciplines they have a place very and for direct for the direct discipline the gyanam is is the ultimate tapas greatest tapas because it is a direct means next to that does does everyone come back to ishvara what is will be coming back going home because krishna uses the word bhagavata many here bhagavata many many arjuna could assume that only some people come back to ishvara and others do not these are all the word the translations of the word, the shankaracharya bhagavata bhashya shankaracharya bhashya in the yes questions and then he answers arjuna could assume only some come back to ishvara and others do not the word bhagavata being plural therefore can refer to any number of givers starting with three put note three In Sanskrit, there are number okay. That is uh, Bhagavata is plural, so singular is eka vachanam, dual bhi vachanam. So Bhagavata is bhagu vachanam. Therefore, it will be more than two, starting with three. Point here is that even if it is just three, a million or more or a finite number is implied. A number more than two, it could be a three or it could be million or it could be more. Arjuna therefore may have asked Krishna, why does he not allow everyone to come to him? Bhagavata. Bhagavata is a finite number. More than two. But why not everyone? So such a question, Krishna, Brahman, Krishna would have would have only answered, "I can only take them to me if I am separate from them." But I am them. If we are separate, perhaps there might be something I could do about it. But since they are not, they are not separate from me. What can I do? It is not a case of my having to bring them to me because I am already identical with them, one with them. There's nothing here that I have to do. As Ishvara, they can invoke me, and in whatever form they invoke me, I bless them. Ye yatha maam pravadhyante tam satai bhajam yakum comes later. Ye yatha maam pravadhyante, whichever form they invoke me, that is going to be next shloka. So I bless them, whatever form they invoke me. So I bless them, whatever they desire, they get. Therefore, I am not to blame in this particular situation. I don't have any ragad vishar to fulfill in this matter. Now, do I take take names out of a hat every day to see that some people suffer and some remain happy and so on? I do not follow any such rule. Bhagavata means those people desperately wanted they work for it. Therefore, they attain me. Similarly, others also whatever they want they get. So they have to choose. So Bhagavata, many people they have chosen me, therefore they have come back to me. Others also have the freedom, choice is there, so therefore they have to choose. So not that I am partial to a few. If partial, if I am partial to you, then Bhagavan need not teach Gita to Arjuna and to all through through Arjuna to all. So therefore, there is no Raga and Dvesha on the side of. The father, the part of Bhagavan. It is only Jiva has to choose, choose to know the Bhagavan, choose to know the Bhagavan, Ishvara. If he has a determination to know, he will know, and he will attain, attain within court in terms of knowing. Madhavam Agataha. In this way, Krishna prays for the next section, which he explains how Ishvara is free from any kind of blame. That is, Ishvara is not partial. Bhagavata, the word, so that is the connection. Why only 
a few people. Why not all the jivas, all the beings, any jiva, not only manushya. So therefore, she explained that how oh, is free from any kind of blame with reference to what happens in one's life. Otherwise, we would be left asking why Ishwara blesses one person and not another. Why so partial? This is a common question every Ajnani has. Why some are born with the golden spoon, other with no spoon at all? So the next shloka begins. Let us read. Ye yathamam tapadyante. Ye yathamam tapadyante. Tans tathaiva bajham yaham. Tathaiva bajham yaham. Mama vartmanu vartante. Mama vartmanu vartante. Manusha partha sarvashaha. Manusha partha sarvashaha. Ye, that is those people, those, those, maam prapadjante. Ta maam prapadjante, taan tateva bajami. Baja In whichever day worship me, I bless them accordingly. That way I bless them. Mama vartama, my path alone, survey. Manuvartan, they follow. Manushyaha, Partha Sarvasha, in all ways, they alone, they Manushyaha, they follow my path alone. That is whatever path I have laid, that alone Manushyaha, human, Manushyaha, human beings, they follow. Why human beings? Why not all the jivas? Because human beings only have freedom, choice. For human beings only have Purushartha. So therefore, he, they, have, they can choose. Therefore, they can, they have the Capacity. They have the capacity to choose and work for gaining any purushartha, dharma, artha, kama, moksha, among the four, any purushartha, they can choose and work for it. So, whichever purushartha they want, they can work for it. And all the four purushartas are revealed by, are, are known from the Veda. The Vedas are, not, are the words of the Lord. Therefore, all the people, all the human beings, they follow. My alone, my path alone, whatever I have, whatever I have taught, whatever I have revealed through the Veda, that alone all the human beings follow. Only human beings, human beings can follow and they follow. Therefore, there is no partiality with regard to human beings. So those who worship me in whatever way, I bless them in the same way. What it means, whatever they ask for. If, if a person asks for Artha Purushartha, he gets it. He invokes me and he worships me. He is earnestly prays for that and therefore he gets it. He does it. He works for it or he does particular ritual as it is revealed in the Veda for Dhanam. So he is blessed with Dhanam. Similarly, Dhanam, Dhanyam, Bhagaputra, Labham, etc. Dirgam, Ayuku, Longevity, etc. Whatever a person, whatever a person, uh, Desires that he is blessed with that. He is blessed with that. When the person takes up the when the, when the person takes up the the method, when the, when the person takes up the work, the task, the activities, the person takes up the act activities to gain that. As it is revealed in the Karmakanda portion of the Veda. If a person wants jnana, then he comes to Vedanta. He has to choose Vedanta. So choosing is the root. So for one can choose Karma Kanda or Jnana Kanda. That depends on what Purusharta one wants. The freedom of choice is there. So therefore, whatever Purusharta the person may choose, all those Purusharthas are revealed through the Vedas by me alone. Therefore, they follow my path alone. Therefore, they are People follow my path in all ways. There can be only one, four Purusharta only. There cannot be more than that four. Artha and Kama, and this should be in keeping with Dharma. These are three Purusharta and Moksha Purusharta. So, therefore, there cannot be the fourth Purusharta. So, Dharma, Artha, Kama revealed by Karma Kanda of the Veda, Moksha by by Vedanta. So therefore, human beings pursuing the Purushartha, they follow. 
they follow my path alone. Follow, they, they pursue any of the four Purushartha as it is revealed by me through the Veda. Therefore, they follow my path. Mama Vartma. Vartman. Nakaranta Shabda. Vartma meaning path. Mama Vartma no Vartante. Therefore, ye yata maam prapadhyante. Whatever way, whichever way the person worships me, invokes me, worships me, that way I bless them. Again, Krishna is talking as, here as Ishvara because Mam is the Mam Prapadyante and Mama Bhartva and Agam Bajami. Bajami means I bless them, I bless the person with whatever he, he with whatever he, whatever he, uh, he needs, he asks for, I bless them. Not just asking, asking also, prayer also. The prayer in the form of the prayer. The prayer could be in the form of Vachika, Kaika, Nvanasa. Could be a the prayer could be in the form of the Kaika through the body, physical prayer, physically in the form of physically in the form of Upavasa or in the form of circumambulating the, the temple or, or Yatra, etc. That will Kaika, Kaika Karma. Or doing Yajna. Ritual, a particular ritual for gaining the particular end, that is Kaika Karma, Tamale Vachika, oral, oral prayers, then Manasa, Upasana. So, by Kaika, by Kaika, and Kaika Karma, Vachika Karma, Manasa Karma, Karma. So, these are the subject matter of the Karma Kanda. So, those who follow Karma Kanda for certain ends, they are blessed, that, blessed with that end. Similarly, Jnana Kanda, Vedanta, the person chooses, the mature person chooses Vedanta, having understood that which are gained through karma or ephemeral, becomes a Vedanta and chooses, pursues Vedanta, is blessed with Jnana. Therefore, those who worship me, whichever way, I bless them in the same way. So, therefore, here, here Krishna is talking as Ishwara. This verse is an important one because it answers the question about how the Lord is to be worshipped. With what degree of devotion, with what inner commitment, with what purpose, and in what form are the people to worship? According to Krishna, it's all very simple. I bless them in whatever form they invoke. Suppose Bhagavan can be invoked in a stone, it can be invoked in a clay, as Ganapati is invoked today. Being Vinayaka Chaturthi, he is invoked in just a form of a clay. A clay is given a form and it's invoked and given puja. And tomorrow it is punar puja. Punaf, punar, punar, punaf puja. That punar, again, second to complete the puja tomorrow and after after the disarjanam. The Ganapati, the Lord who is invoked in the murti, and tomorrow is with his, in his. He is uh, evoked and then he is given Vesarjanam. He is dropped in devotion or he is dropped in, in, in the belly. So the form, the form is Mithya. The form has served the purpose. It has to be destroyed. Form is gone, but Ganapati has not gone. He is there in my heart. In fact, from the Hridaya, from once Hridaya is invoked in the Murti and is withdrawn back after the puja, and then Visarjanam is called. That is the idea. That is why Ganapati Visarjanam is another uh, yeah, a famous event. All the Ganapatis are taken in procession and immersed in the sea. Sea or the river or well, whatever it is. So therefore, in, I bless them in whatever form they invoke me according to the karma, according to the prayer. Karma, the, the activity action according to the prayer karma in the form, karma is, is action action is that is a prayer because yeah an end is involved therefore prayer and prayer could be in the form of taika karma vachika karma or manasa karma physical action or oral action or mental action for example those who want wealth and still to get it they are also they are blessed with a person that is a blessing bhagwan blesses a person who gains wealth by stealing with the present sentence. It's as simple as that. Therefore, don't blame me. 
You wanted wealth and you adopted the means of stealing. Therefore, you are blessed with the present sentence. If you want wealth and you work hard, you are blessed with that. So, ye yata maam prapadyante tansataiva akambajami. If a devotee worships the Lord in the form of Krishna, that is the form in which the devotee will see the Lord. In other words, seeing the Lord as Krishna is purely subjective. Even though this vision is very real to the devotee. Devotee will sometimes say, I saw Krishna yesterday. For devotee who has been worshipping the Lord in the form of Krishna for a long time, it is possible to visualize the Lord in that form. It is possible. But this kind of Lord comes and goes, which means the vision is bound by time. Whereas the person who saw Krishna remains. So, if, if intense bhakti is there, Bhagavan may appear in some form and one can visualize a lot. But that visualization, subject that is, because it is visualization, it is bound by time. The vision comes and goes. The person remains. Does this not mean that devotee is greater than the Lord who comes and goes? So, if so, what kind of a Lord is this? The question comes. Bhagavan comes and goes, but the devotee doesn't go. The vision of God disappears. Therefore, God comes and goes, whereas the devotee doesn't go, he remains. So, in what kind of Bhagavan is that? So, and if what if the Lord appears in some other form? What if he appears as a Western Lord, quoted, booted, and suited? The devotee again will become confused. Thus, Krishna says, In whatever form I worship, in that form I alone I appear. The intense devotion of the Bhakta makes, a Bhagavad, makes uh, the Bhagavad appear in that form. But again, all those forms are, because it is a form, it is Mithya alone. Mithya yada. Bhakti is not Mithya. Bhakta knows. The real Bhakta is real Jnani. He knows even the form of the Lord is Mithya because the Lord is not away from me. That is Jnana. That is real Bhakti. In fact, that is Jnana. Okay, I think we'll stop here. As you so, so shall we read. We'll see tomorrow. Om Pur Namada Pur Namidam Pur Nad Pur Namada Chate Pur Nasya Pur Namadaya Pur Nameva Vishishyate Om Shantashan Tashantihi Harihi Om Shay Guru Pyo Namaha Harihi Om Namada